What's up everybody, it's Blaze from Funbox here and I have a camera but my headset's gone dead so I've got to replace that and maybe in the next few videos I'll be able to get a ring light or another light source in so I can get the lighting even instead of just using my window to the side here. Anyway, just give me a bit of time to sort things out uh, visually. In this video, we are going to get started with doing attack and dealing damage to the units in the game. We won't be covering any of the unit selection yet, not yet, but we are going to get the foundation for that. So for this section, we're going to be working with sequences again. We will be doing sequences a lot for this system, if that hasn't already become clear for you guys. We are going to work with sequences and specifically we're going to use both the moments as well as the broadcast system. Now, for those of you who haven't used these two new systems yet, moments is basically a chunk of code or function that you call at a specific frame within the sequence, right? So it, it's actual code that you can run. It can be, it can be anything. For us, we're going to use it to do calculations and to determine true or false values. That's what we're going to be using moments for. The broadcast system, if you imagine, is kind of like how TV or radio works. You've got a single unit or a radio station and it broadcasts out a signal. Whoever's listening for that signal will react to it in any specific way. Using that similar concept, that's how the broadcast system in GMS works for us. Each one of our units is going to send out a signal whenever they do something in the sequence and whoever's listening out there, whether it's other units or in our case, the manager itself is going to react accordingly, right? So that's, that's in a very, very brief description how moments and broadcasts work. We will be looking at those in depth in this video, a little bit in depth in this video and if it's still not clear, then once we get to writing the code out, we will be referencing this material here. So let's get into what we're going to write, what we're going to add in. So like I said, we're going to be doing attacking and dealing damage, but we're also going to be doing things like missing, right? You can, you can have your units attack, but having a 100% hit chance is a bit generic, right? Like, and it's OP right? You do want to have the chance to miss your attacks. And so for that, for these new sections or these new features that we're going to add in, very important features by the way, we're going into the units and we are going to put in, for now, uh, three new variables for our stats. And that is going to be the attack stat, of course. And then we're also going to have a defense stat. And then Naturally, to determine our hit chance, we're going to have accuracy as well. All right. You know what? Let's, let's, uh, let's start with these. So our accuracy is going to range from 0 to 1. That's because we're going to be working with percentages. And everything will be explained here, hopefully. And hopefully there's enough detail in the explanation as well. So our accuracy is going to be 0 to 1, and that is because it is going to be a percentage. So for example, 0 0.3 is 30%, right? So if our, let's say for example, our character has a 30% hit chance, we would write up a function, or in code, we would check to see if the number that we roll, we're going to pick a random number, and if that number is greater than 3 or less than 3, depending on how you want to write your code, but in our case, if the number is greater than 3 or 0 0.3, it's going to come up true and we'll be able to hit our enemies. If it comes up less than 0 0.3, then we miss. It's basically how it works. All right, naturally, our defense is going to be how much damage we can receive and cancel out. And of course, our attack is going to be how much damage our units can deal to each other without uh, taking away da uh, defense first. Okay, so these are the new stats that we're going to be working with. Naturally, if you're doing 
uh, attacking and getting hurt for your units, these three stats, or at least attack and defense, are going to be very important for you guys, right? All right, let's move on to the next bit. Our units are also going to have, to deal with the accuracy, it's going to have a new function. And this function for GMS, we're going to put it into the create event. So in the parent unit object, we have the create event there, and we're going to write this function. And you can give it whatever name you want, but um, what it will determine is whether our attack will hit or miss. Okay, so our function, let's just put a placeholder name in, is check hit. Just like that. And it doesn't take any parameters. Now for us, we're going to roll some dice, right? Not roll a dice, more like a pick a random number. So our random number, random, and then one. So GMS2 has a function that is literally called random. And when you put in one, it'll pick any number, and it's a decimal number, between zero and one. You can make it much wider by going, say, writing two or three or four, it depends, it's completely up to you. But for us, we're only going to work with zero to one. And if this number is greater than our accuracy, then, let me just write if, if the random one is greater than our accuracy, then we need to have a new variable here. So attack, we're gonna call it attack will hit. And attack will hit is basically going to be true or false, but we want to start with false here. Attack will hit is, I'll just write F. And if our random number that we get is greater than our accuracy, then we're going to count that as a hit. And so attack, I'll just write ATK, will hit. We're going to set that to true, right? That's that's it. If, of course, else, right? Else, ATK will hit is going to stay as false, right? So every time we have a unit attack, it's going to run this function, this check hit function. And it will change the attack will hit from either true to false or whichever, whichever, right? Based off of the accuracy of the unit. The other function that we're going to need, of course, is the hurt function. And the hurt function actually needs a parameter. It's going to take the attack of the unit that was attacking the current unit. So hurt is going to take an amount. That's the parameter here. All right, so obviously we might need to have an extra variable for us. I need to check this. So I'm gonna put a triangle there. I need to check if it'll actually work because we have actually come to a bit of a deviation the version that we're working on now is a little bit different to the one that I had before, mainly because this version is a little more streamlined. And so I want to try something different compared to what I showed you guys at the start of the series in the overview video. All right. So I want to check to see if this works and if it'll work better than my original solution. So for our units, we'll add in one more uh, variable and we'll call it incoming in coming damage, I'll just write damn, there we go. All right, so back to the hurt function, it takes an amount and this amount is going to be the damage here, right? And so for our hurt, we are going to take our current HP and all it does is it takes a current HP and it minuses, minus equals, our uh, incoming damage, incoming damage minus, minus the defense. Now, 
Here's a bit of a problem. What if the incoming damage is less than, than the defense, right? So what if, for example, one unit's attack is one, but our defense is two? Well, the incoming damage is one minus two is negative one, but if we're minusing a negative number, it's actually going to increase our health. We don't want that to happen. And so to prevent that from happening, what we can do, and I'm just, I'm just trying to figure this out now as I write actually, what we can do is say incoming damage minus defense, or rather we can actually use another function. Actually, let me just get rid of these. We can use another function here called minimum. I think that's probably better if we use that. If we use minimum, we can write incoming damage or def minus defense. We can just go like this. DMG minus def or zero. Um, but looking at that, I think it might have to be max, actually. It should be max, not minimum. Because negative one is still less than zero, so we kind of need to use the max, not the minimum. We need to use the maximum between that two. Essentially, what this function does is it runs an if statement. So if, basically what the maximum function does is, and you can write it this way as well, you can write if in coming damage is minus defense, defense is less than zero, then current HP equals, well, current HP, current HP. And I'm running out of space here. Let me see if I can scroll down a bit. No, I cannot. That's okay. Else, I'm just gonna draw an arrow here. Else, current HP, current HP minus equals uh, incoming damage. So something like that, right? Very, very rough. And we might, I might have to fiddle around with how we, how best to keep it simple for the hurt function. But basically we're going to check if we take with the incoming damage minus defense. If that is less than zero, then our health shouldn't change, right? If it's zero or less, it shouldn't change. But if it's actually greater than zero, then we minus that amount from our health. That's basically how it works, okay? So just keep that in mind. There are other ways to do it, like you can use absolute numbers, but let's try to simplify things as much as possible. There's no use in over-engineering your code. All right, so that's what we're going to do for units, right? So we already have our term finished bit that we did in the last couple of videos. So we don't need to do anything past that. However, because I want us to use the broadcast system, what we're going to do after we've actually finished our attack is we're going to use a listener in the manager class or in the manager object. Let me just write manager here manager. So in the manager object, what we're going to do is we're going to take our unit that's finished and we're going to listen for a specific broadcast. This broadcast is a string and we're going to listen for the attack finished. Attack finished. Now this comes, this event, there's a special event, a very specific event inside each object now for GMS 2.3 that has to deal with broadcast. And it's called the broadcast listener, I think is what it's called. But uh, we'll be writing the code for that there. When the manager 
realizes that, hey, the unit's attack is finished, or when it receives that signal, it's going to flip an internal flag that allows us to go from the wait phase through to the processing phase and then back up to the top again, right? So when it, when it goes from attack finished, it's going to say global, global dot selected. I'm thinking that we should probably clean this up and have each unit send out that mes message itself, but uh, I'm actually taking this from the demo version that I created a few months ago. We'll see how it works out with this way and maybe later down the line, maybe I'll do a section dedicated to cleaning things up and polishing things a bit. We will we'll change that system up a bit, but uh, for now we'll just stick to what I have here. So global.selected.term finished, turn finished, we're gonna set that to true. And then the wait phase code, so here, that wait phase code is just wait phase. The wait phase is just going to continue on, just like what we had before. Okay, so this section is focused mostly on the units rather than the manager, whereas before we were focusing a little more on the manager. We wanna get this done really, we wanna get it done as much as possible. We won't be able to defend against units yet and we're not able to select uh, which target we want to choose yet because we don't have anything like the team set up yet. We will, however, by the end of this section, have our attack and damage done. Another thing that I still haven't mentioned is also the death animations and removing items, uh, units from our unit list. We were, we're not going to deal with that just yet. In fact, um, when it comes to the hurt here, I might just put some hard-coded numbers in just so that we can get at least the functionality going. Um, but maybe we might deal with unit, unit deaths in the next section immediately following this one. It just seems to make more sense for me, but uh, for now, let's focus on one thing at a time. That's it for this video, guys. So hopefully it works out. Hopefully my theory explanation is fine for you guys. Yes, I will get a light in so that you guys can see me better and I can get proper lighting in here. But uh, let's, like I said, let's take things one step at a time. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, you guys want to see more, don't forget to subscribe, turn on your notifications, and leave a like and comment, guys. It helps with getting this channel noticed. I know that uh, some people just either leave a like and just leave it at that. That's fine, that helps. Um, but hey, if you have questions, let me know because then I can help you guys even more when you do. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.